Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another session here by Room for Discussion. Today, we have the honor to interview the entire UVA uh, University of Amsterdam Executive Board. We will specifically talk about the university response to COVID-19. Is proctoring a violation of the privacy of students? Should there be more in-person classes? What has the university done to counter the negative effects of online classes on the mental health of students? These, among other suggested questions by fellow students in the Room for Discussion page, will be discussed today with the president of the uh, University of Amsterdam Executive Board, Herten Dam, Rector Magnificus, Karen Max, and Jan Litsen, the person in charge of finances and operational management for the university. Thank you for joining us. So let's get right into it. Jan, if you were to evaluate the university's response to COVID-19 so far, what would you say was well done and what could have been improved? I think what was extremely well done was in, that in this moment, this, this, this spring, when we had to change from on campus to online, we did that in one, two weeks. We made the change, all the teachers, all the persons in the IT staff, all the persons in facilities, they did their utmost best to transform our complete curriculum into something that would be worthwhile doing online. Uh, this is really, really a huge effort and, and, and it's been appreciated also by students. We saw at that moment that all the students were really, really, uh, grateful and appreciative of what we did. So this was really good. Of course, it was improvised. It wasn't planned, so it wasn't as as uh, as as uh, as a thought through as we would have liked it to be. But it it was something that happened, and it learned us a lesson that that to go from uh, uh, on campus to online or hybrid can be done. So uh, this this is. This is the way we went into uh, into the summer, and then of course uh, we had our situation uh, as of September, in which we were able to to get 20% on campus uh, uh, education, and 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 this is this is difficult. It's more difficult than we thought. We thought it would be quite easy to get every student to have at least one hour of uh, on-campus education every week and we see that is not uh, we're not succeeding to on, on on delivering that and it is a complicated matter because it has to do with transportation it has to do with physical rooms it has to do by, with IT facilities it has to do with the the planning of teachers capacity uh, so all these things are happening at the same time and it's very difficult so we're a little bit frustrated about that so that's what, frustration what went uh, good. you're mentioning frustration Kurt would you say that then this was the hardest thing to cope with how, how to organize more face-to-face -face yes uh, the possibilities um, yes I think so because we all know that face-to-face -face come face-to-face uh, 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 -face out on campus is very very important for the quality of our education um, and it was very hard to organize um, and we, we thought um, uh, in October uh, we, we, we should make more use of, of hybrid uh, education and so on and then the second goal of the coronavirus uh, Up then, yeah. so we had to face with that and that, that, that made it so so difficult so we are now planning to organize more face-to-face -face, uh, um, uh, contact hours, uh, hybrid forms of education at the start of the second semester. And we hope the COVID virus is, um, well, it's, it's not so present as it is uh, at the moment now, but it's very, very hard to tell. Well, I mean, that's great news that uh, you're already planning to talk about in-person um, to hold more in-person classes in the future. But yeah, before but we were planning, we were planning that also at the start of this academic year. So it's not only good news. I see. So, uh, we we hope we can realize it because it's very very needed. Okay, so I mean, before we touch on that subject, I want to go into the, the quality of education as you mentioned before. So, Karen, 
Now, this question is for you. I mean, a lot of students we feel are worried about their worth of the diploma because they didn't get the same education as the alumni of their courses who graduated before the pandemic. Is this a legitimate concern? Well, um, of course, that's also a concern very close to our heart. And uh, all the uh, measures that we have taken are there to um, avoid that that would take place. And that's actually on, on, a, on a few uh, levels. First, uh, the study delay. Uh, we wanted to make sure that that study delay is as minimal as possible. And uh, actually, uh, so far, that is with, uh, with, uh, uh, with success. We are monitoring that. Um, uh, second point is that um, uh, there is, of course, um, uh, there is a lack of, of um, uh, um, physical uh, uh, education in, this, in the sense of personal, personal uh, education. So this is, uh, uh, these are matters that we're missing. So that's important uh, uh, for the study, not only for the study, but also for the, the, the personality and, and, and the growth in, uh, in, 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 a, in, in many ways. Uh, but then again, I do believe that in uh, in the uh, current situation where people are um, now really, in a, all students and every one of us is in a very uh, difficult um, uh, time very period of time. I think this is also something to think about because there's also a, a lot of learning uh, uh, related to that. So um, no, I I do believe that um, we do our utmost best. To make sure that both uh, in the in the um, uh, education as in the formation of the person, we do the utmost best to do whatever is possible to not to have that. But the concern, of course, in the in the world, in the society, uh, there's also a change, and uh, uh, what the job market will do, things like that. that that's another point. So that uh, that's something that we do not have in our hand. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Karen, we also have a, another question for you, which goes more into the quality of the education. So we've heard a lot from different students that they feel like the quality of education has diminished. Um, looking, for example, at professors who are struggling to work with, with formats such as Zoom, but also students who feel like these Zoom tutorials and lectures are a bit more shallow and they don't really interact as much as they would do in physical education. Would you agree with the statement that education has the quality of education has decreased? Well, it has not. It has become uh, less rich. That's for sure. It has so it has lost uh, some of its components. But if you if you in the monitoring that we have done so far, uh, we don't see uh, more study delay or more um, uh, uh, bad results or, or whatever worse results or whatever. So in that sense, it is at least as limited as we can organize it. But couldn't it also... Um, so I would not overdo it. But yeah. of course, I understand that uh, it is a very narrow way of uh, having the education at this moment. Yeah, this is right. Okay, thank so you. May, may, maybe I'm allowed to add something about it. Yeah, go for it. Of course. Students as well as teachers really miss is uh, interacting with each other, debating uh, about the learning content, uh, uh, ask, asking questions in... in um, uh, and so on, and, and we know, and I'm an educationalist, as you know, that, that the degree of academic and social integration is by far uh, the most important for study success and also for dropout. And what we miss is real interaction. So that mm -hmm. hampers uh, the degree of integration, and students yeah. feel that. Yes. Yeah. We as teachers as well. I think this is a very and then good and then point. sorry <laughs> I think that's a very legitimate point and we will go a bit more into the um, the, the loss of in-person education but before we do that um, Jan we would like to ask you a question on tuition fees so I think uh, a big narrative that's going on right around students right now is um, the feeling that we're not getting what we're what we're paying for I mean we're paying the same amount of tuition but as we said before, the quality of education has, in some levels, decreased. How would you justify this, that we're still paying the same amount of tuition? Well, OK, you, you can, you can uh, have several approaches. I, I, I understand that, that, it, uh, that it feels like you're paying uh, for something that should be uh, quite different. And I think that's true. 
On the other hand, this is what uh, we call in, in business force majeure. This is a, this is a, this, we can't we can't uh, do anything other than this. And in the end, we're giving you the education, no uh, resources that you should have. We're giving you the diploma that you uh, were promised, but of course in a completely different way. And we're making the costs. So if, if, if it was like uh, we could uh, dispose of uh, a lot of uh, uh, staff and say, well, we, our costs are being cut for 10, 20, 30, 40 percent, of course, we, we should be uh, the first ones to, to, to transfer that in some way to you as our students. But we're making the cost. So this is, this is really the way that it that we must uh, do this uh, to recover our costs. And the other thing is, uh, as for uh, 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 Dutch students and European students, uh, we're not allowed, to, we need not, not even allowed to, to, uh, to reduce our, uh, our tuition fees, fees. So this, this, is, this is the way I would respond to it. Doesn't mean that, that, you, that you, you're not, you're, you're, you don't have any reason to feel uh, a little bit uh, uncomfortable about it. I, I would, I would in your situation, and I feel uncomfortable about it too. But we're doing what we can, so that's 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 the best we can do. Yes, I think um, we're now going to move on to the in-person education, of, of, or like thereof. Um, Karen, this question is directed at you. Um, when talking to students, we realize that the quality of online education or the question about the quality of online education is also one of accessibility. So mainly in Amsterdam, I mean, housing is, is scarce and the quality of housing isn't always great, which kind of uh, results into students not having proper working spaces. Add to that that cafes and um, other possible alternatives are now closed off. Not every student has the ability to have a, or has access to, to a proper working space. What is the youth have done to make sure that these students, that the students have equal access to proper yeah. working spaces? Um, well, I, I, it's an important question, and that that's something that we have been uh, um, uh, be dealing with a lot with this uh, uh, to see how we could um, uh, at least do as much as possible the, to um, adhere to that. Um, one of the things is that our um, buildings have always stayed open. So this means that study places are there. So people who do not have, uh, students who do not have the right uh, uh, housing um, uh, to study um, are welcome to come to the study places in the, in the UVA uh, to do so. Uh, of course, at the rules uh, of the one and a half meter distance and such and such, but it is possible. So this has been an important thing to do, uh, even in the first wave uh, in March, April, uh, that, that's, uh, that's what we did and that is still uh, the case. Um, but still, uh, I mean, there's only spots for to to reserve twice a week, and often these libraries are fully booked. I mean, Pace Hofthaus is completely closed. There is still a lack of, of study places. Is there yeah. any opportunity to solve this yeah. lack? At this moment, we are uh, looking into um, uh, actually um, uh, organizing all the spaces of the uh, small rooms that we have, the, the small um, uh, lecture rooms that we had and which are now too small to, uh, uh, to, to um, uh, teach in. Uh, we are going to make them open or we are planning to do that uh, um, to, to make sure that here, for instance, if, you, if students are working on a, on a project or doing something together, um, that they can also use these places. Um, and that's also uh, interesting because we do know that um, uh, students are missing the contact and, uh, and uh, just the discussion, as Geert already pointed out. And that would be also a way uh, to resolve that uh, to some extent. So, and this is something that is going to come still, uh, last things need to be uh, arranged for that, but that's actually the plan and that would help a lot, hopefully. Yes, I think this is a perfect um, move to the question we had for Kate and Nam. Um, in your interview with Perot, you actually say that physical contact is essential for good education, so we really lost something. This is your own statement, but still there's little to no physical education, mainly at, at Rutgers Island. How would you justify this? 
Yeah, you're absolutely true. Face-to-face -face contact is, is the heart of, of, the, of our education. Uh, we are not an online university uh, distance education, uh, uh, and we don't want to be uh, such a distance institute like, for instance, the Open University. Uh, but having said that, uh, we were prepared to, uh, um, 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 to, to realize more on campus education, and then the second wave came. So that was not our choice, and that's an understatement. So we, we can't, we have no other way to justify the lack of face-to-face -face education uh, um, because of the second wave. So because it's not only about uh, education in, in uh, lecture halls and so on with a social distance, but it's also about public transport uh, and uh, all the student movements as well as teachers. Uh, um, uh, well, so these are huge obstacles yes. to organize more face-to-face. -face. Yes, I think a big question that came from our audience as well was why the UVA doesn't use external locations, like for example, we, the Rappaut University. Yeah. But we do use external locations. We make use, for instance, of our university sports center and so on. But it's not only about the availability of, of huge rooms, but it's also about tra uh, uh, public transportation. It's also about the availability of teachers. Are they able or willing to come to the campus? As well as there's also a group of students who are outside the Netherlands, so they can't come to external locations. So what we are doing now is try to organize uh, different hybrid forms of education on a more larger scale and we are doing everything to prepare for that after the second wave at the start of the second semester and it's tough and we really understand the frustration of the students and um, did this really touch upon the quality and the well the, the heart of our, our education absolutely Thank you. No, it's, it's quite satisfying to hear that, of course, we know that you're doing all of, the, all of the things that you can do and that after the second wave, we'll have hybrid learning spaces. So, Hurt, now we want to address proctoring. Um, students complain that using proctoring is against their privacy right. What is your stance on the use of proctoring? Okay, we have made a decision about proctoring a couple of months ago and we stated that it's only allowed when there is no other alternative and only during this period, this COVID period of time. Uh, and, and we did so in order to avoid a further uh, study delay. And we uh, took a couple of me measurements to in, in order to, uh, to, uh, to take care of the privacy of students so, for instance, uh, only members of the ex examination board are uh, um, to access whether there is fraud or not, not a, an anonymous uh, algorithm and so on. Um, we only store the images for a period of, I suppose, 30 days within Europe, not outside Europe, and, uh, well, and so on. And if there are personal reasons for students uh, um, they, they can do the examination on campus. So we try to, to organize uh, the privacy as good as we can. And uh, again, making use of uh, proctoring is only uh, uh, allowed when there is no other alternative. No other alternatives and only used as a last resort. So I, mean, I, I read your quote, I think they quote you on Folia, on a Folia article that uh, you, you mentioned that if there were only any other viable alternatives, you would have already found them. But what about um, open book exams, open question exams with limited yeah, yeah. Th at times or multiple choice questions, which Absolutely. have a large amount, which are not the, you know, like if you have 20 multiple choice questions, having a poodle of multiple choice questions of 100, and then students won't have the same multiple choice questions. Ha how did the analysis of the UVA uh, go towards this alternatives, and how, why did you come to the conclusion that still proctoring was better than these other alternatives ways of? Well, of, 
Of course, these are good alternatives. Uh, uh, in, in my own uh, uh, master module, we make use of writing a paper. Well, that's, that's still the case, mm -hmm. whether there's COVID or not. So no alternative means, no alternatives in a particular program in a specific situation with a number of students. So 1,000 students is very, very difficult, different in, in, a, in a particular uh, a program than, for instance, in my master course, 60 students. So the alternative refers to a specific situation and it's uh, the responsibility of the examination board to, uh, um, um, well, to, to, uh, to, um, uh, to decide, uh, you say so in English. Determine, uh, determine. To determine whether there is an alternative or not. We can't say that in general. Yeah. But it's part of the examination board and in the end of the deans of a specific faculty. Okay, so uh, help us understand that because, um, qu Karen, this is a question for you. The Faculty of Economics and Business uh, uses proctoring for the exams most regularly compared to other faculties. It seems to us that the decision whether to implement proctoring or not has largely been left to the discretion of the faculty's directors. Doesn't this then limit the extent to which the UVA executive board can supervise that proctoring is only used uh, in cases of last resort? Like what explains this variation of the use of proctoring between faculty? Well, it, it, uh, it depends very much. Uh, we have had this discussion uh, uh, with the deans to, to understand uh, uh, why, uh, who is making, or in the, in the uh, uh, Board of Education, uh, um, who is, um, or which uh, education is um, uh, choosing for which uh, solution. That's very different. But there's also, I can give you an example, uh, for instance, in law faculty, uh, they also have uh, very big numbers. And uh, for some cases, uh, actually, the proctoring is not uh, okay for them because uh, if they want have to look something up in books in, in the in the in the book of law and, and things like that, it doesn't work. So it is really uh, also related to the content. Um, there's also a variation of uh, of uh, uh, different types of uh, of faculty, um, uh, 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 courses courses and, uh, and so it can be different from from, uh, from from that point of view as well so it's a mix and that's why the uh, the education program it, uh, itself is actually the first place or the first table where this has to be discussed with the examination board and of course with the policy then of the or the, the opportunities that are there in the faculty okay. so th that's what is happening and I, I can tell you there's also many uh, um, uh, programs with uh, many students who do not choose for that for these reasons. Mm. Uh, another controversial aspect of the use of proctorial is uh, that of the uh, room scans. So, John, this is a question for you. Students are asked to scan their entire room, and some students have felt that this is crossing a red line. Uh, this is really the, what crosses the red line because then students don't feel comfortable anymore in their own personal space, in their own room. Often they are also advised to put up any paintings or that might have political messages. Wouldn't you say that then this is just outright uh, uh, just crossing the line of privacy of students when the university is now entering you know, the bedroom of students? Uh, th this is an, an, a question with a few answers. Um, I, I think uh, um, uh, privacy is something which is very important. It's uh, absolutely um, on top of our, our minds. So um, it's, uh, it's not something that you uh, give away. Um, the way the proctoring is organized, as Sakir just said, is already dealing with that to a large extent. Uh, uh, so the, the uh, access to the data is uh, only very limited, only in case of indication of fraud and so forth and so forth. So that is uh, uh, much less. Um, also, the fact that you can have uh, your exam in another place, in the, in, in the UVA, on, on, uh, so that uh, it's not at home, it's also one of the possibilities. Um, and I, I, I do hope also for the future, but that is not now, that the, all the privacy aspects of uh, platforms and, and of proctoring uh, uh, exams and all these kind of things is uh, going to be um, uh, uh, studied and, and going to be looked into more, more uh, carefully to make sure that also uh, this is really clear to everyone that there is no privacy problem possible. So there's still some, uh, although I, uh, we have checked and we have organized it that there is no uh, problem now, I do understand 
that it feels strange. I do understand that. Uh, and uh, I, I do believe that uh, for the future, any improvement uh, we, can, we can make, we, we, uh, we have to work on. Thank you. Maybe I can add something to that because the, 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 it is not a question of uh, yes or no. It is a question of proportionality in, in, in legal terms. Uh, uh, so we have stated and we have uh, assessed beforehand whether, of course, the sort of intrusion in your personal sphere, because it is there, is proportional to uh, the goal that we want to have, and that is that our exams are fair and that uh, the, the value of our exams and of our diplomas is still, and of our degrees, is still what we want it to be. So, and, and that is, of course, the trade-off that we have to do. So we have our privacy officer in, uh, in the UVA, and he, she has, 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 has assessed this beforehand in a really uh, uh, thorough way. And of course, and this was, of course, the good right of the, of the student council to do this. It, it was put before the, the judge, and the judge said, yeah, this is, this is proportional. So this is, this is what we have to do. Of course, it is, it is not a, a, a sort of way of, of examining that we're, we like to do. We, we understand that it is difficult. For instance, if your Wi-Fi is, is, uh, is doing uh, 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 rotten things during the exam, yeah. it must be stressful. I, I can understand. So, but this is, this is the way we have to cope. Okay. So thank you for clarifying a bit on your decision to go with Proctorio. I think the last subject we want to touch up upon is, is the welfare of students. So during the protests at Museum Plan, for example, we've seen a lot of concerns coming from students about their own mental health. I mean, students feel isolated, they're lonely, and lack of personal contact, contact isn't really helping. Um, Karen, we were wondering, how is the university help the students that are mentally struggling during this time? Well, um, uh, it's, it's, it's indeed a, um, uh, a problem that we um, uh, are uh, yeah, looking into. Um, mental health was already for years a big program in the UVA, so this continues, of course. And uh, um, I, I do that the um, we do we have, of course, uh, the the the, the uh, psychology and 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 the uh, uh, activities around that. But uh, in these in these months, this is uh, much more uh, important. We realize that. Um, I, this is also one of the main reasons why we really try to uh, organize that there is at least one face-to-face uh, uh, -face, uh, contact uh, among students or uh, uh, in a classroom um, for each student. So this is something that at least in uh, as soon as we can, as soon as as uh, this uh, second wave is um, uh, uh, in a, in a, in, a, in a some other proportion. Um, this is something that we would like really to organize, and that's what we are discussing. At this of course, everyone now is having to deal with the second wave, and we hope everyone is in good health. So just as a final question, uh, Kurt, what would you like to tell students that are listening to us, uh, to us right now? Well, support each other, go outside, uh, uh, make use of the opportunities uh, for uh, uh, study workplaces within our building, for group assignments. So try to interact with all the safety uh, uh, things. Try to interact as much as possible uh, and stay to be critical because it helps us. And uh, um, I really mean that because we also get very good suggestions from students how we can foster interaction. For instance, uh, interactions during Zoom meetings, uh, open a half hour before the lecture, stay open a half hour uh, after that in order to support, facilitate small interactions. So uh, help us uh, uh, to, 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 to organize uh, interaction, face-to-face -face education, as good as we can, and please go outside, because everybody, staff and students as well, are a bit depressed from being in your own room all day. Yeah. Take care, uh, everyone of yourselves. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh,
Room for Discussion has another interview this Thursday with Claudio Borio, the chief economist of the Bank of International Settlements. So if you haven't heard about this bank, this is the central bank of all central banks, so it's pretty important. Uh, so make sure to tune in for that. Uh, this is all for us today. Again, thank you very much to the three of you for joining us uh, today. And have a good week. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>